We recently watched an RV be completely destroyed by fire. And as we watched, we thought, how in the world did this happen? And could this happen to us? Or to you? Let's go down that road. Don't know what's going on over there. We can't even tell how many vehicles are over there. It looks like at least two. Don't know if it's a gas leak. There's no smoke, so it's not a fire. Hello, faithful people. I'm Orlean. I'm Gary. Sometimes things happen and it really makes you think about your own situation. It makes you take a double look at what you're doing or not doing and wondering if you may end up the same way. The National Fire Protection Association estimates there are over 2,000 RV fires annually. That's a lot of fires. Mm -hmm. And the things that we're going to tell you are not just necessarily for how to prevent an RV fire, but some of these will apply to homes, stick and brick homes as well. Recently, an RV in the park that we we're staying in for the winter burned during the night. It completely destroyed their RV and they lived in it full time. Watching the fire trucks and then seeing the pictures that their neighbors showed us the next day of the flames that we that were already out by the time we saw what was going on um, really makes you think about your own home. Some of these things will be strictly for RVs and some of them will be for either one. In this video we're going to look at causes for home fires and for RV fires and what we can do to look for warning signs, uh, things to watch out for, uh, how we can prevent them and how we can be better prepared in case one should happen. These are just some of the causes of RV fires and we'll elaborate on some of them after we go through the list. First one, candles. Any open flame. Um, second highest cause of RV fires are RV refrigerators. And we'll tell you more about that in a minute. Electrical wires that have been chewed by rodents, which can happen in an RV or a house, old wiring that's gotten corroded or cracked. I was thinking of the wiring that takes such a beating when we're going down the road and not knowing what it might be rubbing against or pulling against, so it's always good to check on that. Mm -hmm. uh, they come loose oftentimes while traveling down the road. Um, space heaters is another one. Fabric or flammable materials near a heat source propane leaks, faulty wiring in generators, air conditioners, and hot water heaters. And there's also the problem with uh, occasional overheated brakes on the vehicle. Which happened to us when our brakes locked up one time when we were in Utah. Utah. It was an expensive fix, repair. Yeah, and unfortunately it didn't start a fire, but it wasn't far from it. Yeah. Some of the things on the list are pretty obvious. You don't want to ever leave an open flame unattended. And when you think of the number of people that light candles in their homes, and then they maybe go to bed forgetting about them or whatever, oh my gosh, that is such a dangerous thing to do. And especially in an RV. We're not using, we're not using our space heater a lot during the, at night. We try to rely more on our gas propane furnace than to be using a space heater at night just because it's it's in the main part of our house the, the, the space heater is and it's not too far from our only door we'd have to go out an escape window if there was a fire down here so it's just better to just turn it down at night why do rv refrigerators cause so many fires you should know that the main types of RV refrigerators. There are some that run on battery power. There are some that run on electric or propane 
they go switching back and forth between the two. If you're hooked up to electric, it'll run on electric. If you're hooked up to propane, it'll run on propane. Then there is the third kind, which is in a lot of the newer, bigger RVs, that's more of a residential refrigerator, and you need to have electric for that. The ones that seem to have most of the problems are the ones like we have, and a lot of other RVers do, where it switches from electric to propane. A big problem with the RVs with that kind of a system is when you're unlevel. That's one big warning. Don't you don't want to be unlevel. You want to be as level as possible. And the information we received was that it can be off by three degrees side by side, side to side, or six degrees front to back. That's about all the further you want to test it. If those fluid levels get messed up because the RV isn't level, that could cause a fire. Now you're maybe wondering what about going up and down mountains and things like that. Uh, they say that you can go as much as 14% grade on a road, but you're not going to be doing that for long term. It's going to be a short term kind of thing. When you're parked, you want to be as level as you can. Uh, traveling with your propane on. There's so much controversy about this. You can see a thousand videos on this, but what it really comes down to is you don't want to have the kind of refrigerator that we have where you have a propane as one option. That means that there's a flame in there mm -hmm. and it occasionally ignites to go through the cooling process. So you're going down the road and you need to fuel up. Well, if you're going to do that, you should get out before you get to the pumps and shut your refrigerator off. And shut off your gas propane gas. Outside, yes. before you get to the pumps. That's not always easy to do. Sometimes it's, it's hard getting into a place to fuel up. They're not all real, really made for <laughs> um, uh, RVs. The type of thing to do would be to just travel with your propane off, your gas mm -hmm. off, during the day when you're traveling. That's just the easiest way to do it. When you get to your destination, turn everything back on. Your refrigerator should stay cold for about five to eight hours. That's usually more than most RVers want to travel in a day anyway. And then if you are concerned about it, you can always put an ice block in your refrigerator and then shut the door and keep it shut while you travel. That's the key. Is keeping it shut. <laughs> yes, if you keep opening it and yeah. shutting it, you're going to be letting the cold air out. We traveled for years, for the first, I would say, four years without shutting our propane off when we traveled, except when we'd get to a gas station or something. But we found out that there are a lot of states that require you to shut your propane off when you go through a tunnel. And there's some places that will have a place to pull over so you can shut your propane off before going through those tunnels. Most of them are out east, but there are times when you come up on a road and it's like, oh my gosh, there's a tunnel ahead and we have our, our, our propane on. Not a good thing to have um, if it kicks in to mm -hmm. its cooling cycle while you're in that tunnel. That would be catastrophic. Well, we actually did run into that out west in Cal Northern California. We were up, up by the giant redwoods and we were going to, what's our favorite park up there? Jedediah, Jedediah yeah. State Park. It's the best place to see redwoods. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> we were coming, getting close to that and there was a tunnel before we, we got to it and there was a sign up. We had to stop and turn our, our uh, propane off and shut off our fridge and make sure the furnace was shut down and everything. Yep. So, there are cases where it's just easier to just shut it off and leave it off while you travel. I just realized all this time Gary's head was kind of chopped off at the top and we moved the camera a little bit. Okay, now there are some warning signs that you can be looking for if you have possible faulty wires or whatever. One of them is to be watching for mice, squirrels, ground squirrels, or any kind of rodents that are hanging around your RV or your house and where they're going into and coming out of or where you're finding their tracks in your home, especially if they're climbing up on your tires and things like that, that means they could be getting into areas where they could be chewing on your wires. If you smell gas or ammonia 
open the doors and windows, get out, then call 911 because your cell phone can actually cause a fire, make a spark if there's ammonia or gas leak in your home. And that's why you should never be on your cell phone when you're fueling up at a gas station. It's hard to be aware of everything that could possibly cause a spark. And some of them you don't even think about. Uh, light switches, whether it's a 12 volt or the regular uh, house current, uh, there's always a spark uh, and, and it's, it could just ignite and cause disaster. <laughs> yeah, so if you smell gas or ammonia, don't turn on any light switches or anything. That's why you should always have a flashlight by your bed if possible. Yeah, and if you're in an RV like our size, I don't think I'd even worry about windows. I would just go to the door, make sure your spouse gets out <laughs> and, and your pets or whatever, but uh, just get that door open, get outside, get away from the RV and call 911. We should tell you that the couple that had the fire did get out and they got their dog out as well. But he went even further than that. He was, he works with gas and oil as a job. So for him to think of removing the propane tanks, unplugging his batteries that were on the RV and all of that stuff immediately got all that stuff away from the RV, kept it from exploding. And they also moved their vehicles. Did you mention that? Yep. No, no. Okay. Yeah, they moved their vehicles. And then they went around to all the neighbors in, around them and told them that there was a fire. Uh, you, you may want to move your, your vehicles. And he did all this before the fire department got there. And the fire department was only a mile away. And they came like ASAP. They were there so fast. That was quick thinking. Very much so. So it's, uh, it's good to have a plan uh, to shut off the gas as much as you can. If you can remove the tanks, great. If you can't, just make sure you got it shut off and get away from the RV until help comes. Yep. And we're going to talk more about uh, some of the things to prevent fires coming up. Some more warning signs is flickering lights. We have one light in our RV, well, two actually, that, that, that flicker and they don't come on when they should. We have LEDs in all of our lights right now. So the first thing Gary did was he switched the light bulbs to see if that would keep it from flickering. If it still flickers, then he's thinking it could be the switch, which can be a warning sign that you may have a problem there. With all the rattling that these things do and they're going down the road, it's real easy for wires to get disconnected. So it's good to check the wires in your lights if they're flickering. And if they continue to do that after changing the light bulbs or checking the wires, you may want to replace that unit. One of the things that happens if you have a short in your system, uh, an electric short in your system, is that it'll trip the breakers for house current. Uh, if you have uh, 12 volts like the RVs do, then it'll just blow a fuse. If you keep blowing fuses and if you keep tripping the breakers, there's a sign something is not working properly and you need to find out what it is. So get help. Uh, go to someone that works on those things. Call somebody to come and check it out. Uh, get a voltmeter, multimeter. I think it's a multimeter. And then uh, check it out yourself. But watch a YouTube video or two and, and then uh, do what it says and get it fixed. Uh, it's better than having to replace a burned out. RV. Yeah. So while we were watching that fire and all the fire trucks and everything, we were sitting there thinking, where do we have this? Where do we have that? Should we move this or whatever? So we never take our phones to the bedroom with us ever. And we always leave them out uh, in the kitchen on the table. And primarily because we don't want to be getting some spam thing in the middle of the night. And if the, one of the kids calls, we'll hear the phone ringing, so we, we can come down and answer it. But if there was an emergency and the fire was down in this lower part, we would have no way of calling for help. So we have decided that from now on, we're going to start taking at least one of our phones to bed um, and put it in the bedroom where it's easily accessible. Another thing that we decided to start doing is keeping, which we already were doing, 
uh, we keep our wallet, Gary's wallet and keys and um, my purse with my identification and things like that right by the door so that whenever we leave or have to leave in a hurry, we can quick grab those things on our way out. A big one is having fire extinguishers. When we first bought the RV, it's 20, almost 23 years old now. When we bought it, we that fire extinguisher was mm -hmm. one of the originals. I, I think we saw the date on it. it was like, oh, that's not good. So we got rid of that. We put fire new smoke detectors in and we checked those out. We also have carbon monoxide detectors, which is very important. We have a propane detector also that will detect propane if it's leaking. Mm -hmm. uh, the CO2 detector is for the furnace if there should be a leak and the exhaust comes into the RV. Uh, or if you're using a Mr. Buddy or something like that, the uh, uh, CO2 detector, the carbon dioxide detector would go off and alert you to that. Fire extinguishers. Yes, we have uh, three. We have mm -hmm. one in the kitchen right underneath the sink that we could grab really fast. It, it's called First Alert. It's called, uh, this may be backwards when you see it, I don't know. But I'll put, I'll put the information in the link down below. It's good if you have a grease fire on your stove, fabric or trash or electric fire. Um, this is one to have real fast. And you see the diagrams, the print. Uh, read that stuff ahead of time so you know what to do when you get scared and you don't just shoot it in the wrong direction or something. But look it over study it, memorize it, and then you'll be ready to use that one. Do you remember when you were kids, and I'm sure they still do it, but when we were kids, they had all those fire drills all the time in school. I mean, all the things you were supposed to do if there was a fire drill. If you keep practicing it and keep looking at it and keep studying it and keep doing and being aware of it, when the time comes, you'll think of it right away and you'll know what to do. Which means that not only do you know you, what you keep by the door as you're getting on your way out of the RV, but if you can't get out through the door, if the fire is too close, uh, practice using the other windows, the other escapes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know where they are, but open them up. Go through them. Just see what it's like. We haven't done that yet. I've opened them up. We've opened them up, but we haven't <laughs> gone out of them yet. Well, ours is a little farther off the ground, but in yeah. an emergency. It's, yeah. yeah, I'd rather have a broken leg than... <laughs> Oh, whatever oh, yeah, I know yeah. but I, yeah, yeah. that heals yes. it does it does all right um, another fire extinguisher we have is a little bit bigger more heavy-duty kind and that one is right by the door when we um, in a real easy place to get it it's just um, fastened down with a velcro it has all the instructions on it and it has this little meter up here and when it's on the green it tells you it's full it lets you know <clears throat> it lets you know when it's getting low or when it's time to replace so just make sure you keep checking those periodically I would say about once a month you should be checking all these things the uh, the this first alert thing we found out that the expiration think date on this was um, March of 2027 and we just bought this in late 2022 so it's good mm -hmm. for a long time and where did we get them? I think I got it at Walmart. I might have picked it up at Camping World, but I, I don't know for sure. Okay. You can find them pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Here's a suggestion. In place of burning candles, if you just like to have a fragrance of some kind in your home, you may want to consider essential oil diffusers. They use a little bit of water. They really don't put out a lot of steam or humidity, mm -hmm. which is what most RVers do not want in their mm -hmm. RV. And they, they can put out whatever fragrances you want. Uh, you can combine a lot of different ones to get the scents that you want. And they might not make cafe latte, mm -hmm. latte, whatever. They don't make, make things like that, but they do make some very nice therapeutic fragrances uh, with essential oils, and it's a lot safer. And then you can just shut it off. We keep one in our truck and we have one in the, because it's an old truck, um, and we have one here in our house. And when when the, it d runs dry, it just shuts off. But I don't trust that. I shut it off every night. Keep important papers in a, a fire safe 
box of some kind. That's where we keep our passports, um, any, any important papers, insurance papers, things like that. We keep those in a firebox in our RV home. Getting back to the candles again, which was the cause of the fire for that couple that lost their RV. They had been gone for a couple weeks. They came back. There was a kind of a funky smell in there. They, they would know if it was a gas or propane leak. So we don't think that's what it was. It may have just been that it had been closed up for a couple of weeks and they maybe they had some water damage from the last freeze we had. It could have been a kind of a moldy smell. It could have been any number of things, but they lit a candle and then they forgot about it. And that's what caused the fire. Never leave an open flame unattended, whether it be in the RV, in your home, or a campfire outside, or tiki torches, or anything like that, never leave a fire unattended. Do not leave small appliances plugged in. When we use our toaster, we unplug it as soon as we're done with it. We don't leave it plugged in all the time. Small appliances can cause sparks, and for sure you don't want to have them plugged in when you're traveling down the road. One of the things we did when we first got the RV, very shortly after we got it, we changed all of the incandescent bulbs in here to LEDs. Because first of all, the LEDs do not produce as much heat for that reason, but also for safety reasons, LEDs are a safer option. Another thing that we are pretty much in habit of doing is shutting off a, a lots of things that could cause a fire uh, like a small floor fan or a space heater or something like that. If we're going to leave our RV for a while, we shut those things off before we leave. Those run off of what we call shore power um, that comes from the outside. There's also fans that we have in our uh, overhead vents that uh, will either draw the air out or bring the fresh air in. Uh, you don't want to leave those on either because those are 12 volt and they will continue running even if the outside power is shut off because they're connected to the batteries. And uh, that could be a serious problem. So just to be on the safe side, shut off all those electrical things. It doesn't take that long to cool it off when you get back. Another prevention thing is not to overload electrical outlets. And even with a power strip, you want to be careful that you're not plugging in high demand or high usage um, appliances into the same power strip. Things that draw a lot of power should not be plugged into the same power strip. They should be on separate ones or in different outlets. So like we will not put in our space heater and plug it into the same outlet as our little floor fan because those are pretty strong powerful things that can draw a lot of power. The night of the fire, I had gone to bed. It was about 1230 I think and I started hearing noises and I thought it like a diesel truck kind of thing and I thought is somebody moving in at this time of the night I thought that was really strange and that it just kept continuing with something and it, it got us curious our windows are completely blocked out so we can't see any light or anything coming through them and so we came down into the living room here and looked out the window and saw the red flashing lights and knew, thought, whoa, what's going on? They didn't have their sirens on when they came into the park. By the time we saw what was going on, that fire had only been out for a very short time. We didn't see the flames, no. um, but the neighbors across did, and they were a good probably seven, eight feet above the RV, the entire length of the RV. It even started the grass on fire around it because the grass here is very dry. It's, um, it's a, a new park, so there's a lot of sod that never really got a chance to take hold. And so there was a lot of, uh, a lot of things that could have happened. The advantage too was because it is a new park, there were spaces between theirs and the neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, so it wasn't right next door. And then across the road so they did go and warn everybody in that whole side but the wind was blowing the right direction that it didn't spread to any others uh, everything worked out pretty good considering what could have been yep. yeah yeah 
not so good for them, but for the rest of us. Everybody survived. Yes. Mm. We're going to put a link in the description below um, to the article from the National Park Service where we got part of our information from when we did this research on all the different things that cause fires. And we hope that this video is going to help you also be prepared and ready and prevent that just kind of a, a, just a catastrophic thing from happening to you as well. Do you have any additional tips to share? Maybe have you ever had an RV fire? Do you know someone that did? Do you know if they were able to get it out? Some of you may be thinking, why didn't he just use his water hose to put it out? That fire was so hot and so it burned so fast, there was no time to use that. That's why you have to catch it really fast. And they didn't. Leave us a comment below if you have any additional things to add to this that could help someone. Our whole goal with this video is to help others. And one way that we can do that is if you are, may leave comments, likes, and if you share this video with other people too, YouTube will promote the video more and more people will be able to see it and maybe we'll be able to save more people from going through a fire with their RVs. So if you like this video, if it was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't yet, if you haven't subscribed yet. And then next to it, a little bell is going to pop up. Ring the bell and then you'll be notified every time new videos come up. Check out our Facebook page for some other things. I often put gluten-free suppers on there or meals. Mm. And <laughs> he's the official taste tester. And until next time, be safe and... God bless. God bless.